Hi Hobby friends, let's paint a Black Legion's Terminator really, really fast. Well, I guess it all depends on your definition of fast, but if you are all about getting good looking minis onto the table at a reasonable pace, then you're in the right place. This chap totaled out at about one and a half hours. Just for fun, I'm going to avoid a couple of the usual speed painting crutches as well, namely oil paints and filth. So we're after something relatively clean, but that doesn't look like some unfinished base coats. After a quick base of black, we're throwing on some volume highlights with some white ink. We're going to knock this back in just a second, so don't be afraid of going a little farther than you think looks right. I also gave those skulls a good spritz as well to up the value. If you've not hit on the term value in your painting journey yet, that's just the lightness or darkness of a colour. If you make something grayscale, that is take all the hue information out, you're left with just the value. Value is a massively important tool in painting. It helps the viewer read the painting, or in this case, the mini. It's a vital tool in building a sense of depth and shape, and of course, things have their own inherent local value as well. So a skull is always going to have, on average, a higher value than armor. Anyway, we probably need to do a deep dive into colour terms some other time. I'm going to get on with this bad boy, but let me know in the comments if you want to hear all about the ways we define colours and how those definitions can be useful to us mini painters. Okay, so here's the thing about black. It isn't. I promise you that the colour of any bit of art you've looked at of a Black Legion chappie or a Black Templar chappie or an Ulthway elf or any of the other dark clad folk of 40k has not been pure black, or even mostly black a lot of the time. What gives us the impression of black is just the overall value gamut of the piece, so how dark on average the thing is in relation to everything else. If it's mostly pretty darn dark, we'll see it as black. As such, we have a whole world of colour to explore in black. You can have warmer, earthy blacks, cooler, blue blacks, or in this case, I'm going with a personal favourite, a purplish black. I'm getting that tone here with this transparent ink from Liquitex called Muted Grey. Another quality of black things is their low saturation, or at least a tendency towards low saturation. If I went in here with a strong deep purple, I'd definitely run the risk of the armour feeling more like a very dark purple than black. Because this purple tone is nice and desaturated though, we keep ourselves firmly in the world of black. I can't help but mess around with this stuff, so when there was a fairly even filter of that desaturated purple over everything, I jumped over to the other side of the colour spectrum to green, and glazed a bit of that into the shadows. This is certainly a step you can skip if you're in a real hurry, but the theory here is that a little green will mix with our purple, and because those colours oppose each other on the colour wheel, they should mix down towards black. Now, there is a lot more to explore on this front, and this chap isn't the clearest example of chromatic blacks, but I did it, so I thought I'd better mention it here. Last step on all this stuff is to re-establish some of our darkest areas again with a little spray of carbon black ink here and there. This is just to compensate for the bits of white overspray from the volume sketch earlier. Now we need to do that bit that can become such a time sink on minis like Chaos Space Marines. Such a time sink, in fact, that you may even suffer from post-trim stress disorder. I've given one option for getting through trim fast on my speed painting word bearers video, which I'll link at the end of this, and I suppose you could always solve your PTSD with a lobotomy, perhaps a magical one performed by a Tietjian Majos, but here's another option. Go faster. Alright, that might sound a bit facetious, but I mean it. You can go faster blocking this stuff in, I bet you can. You need to have a comfortable, controlled grip on your brush, you need to be mostly using the edge of the tip of your brush, and you need a paint that is at a flowing consistency that you can control. Everything after that is just about how fast you dare go. 
I got all the trim blocked in with this first base coat, Necro Gold from Scale 75, in just over 10 minutes. How fast can you do it? If you don't try, you'll never know. Habits and comfort zones are all well and good, but it's nice to push our skills too, even if it means increasing failure rate for a little bit. Oh, and not being obsessively fussy helps with speed too. Don't sweat army painting, friends. I got the few straggly bits of silver blocked in as well, and then jumped in with some white to continue upping the value on the tusks and skulls. A bit of regular brushwork like this also really ups the texture variation, which is always a bonus in my books. More colour blocking now, hitting that loincloth with my favourite red blocking colour, Molotow's Burgundy. Knowing your paint is a big part of going fast as well. Find what works for which jobs, and when you want no fuss results, stick with what you know. It's not sexy, but if it gets the mini-men on the tabletop, then it's all good in my books. Alright, you know I don't like to let speed painting be an excuse not to do things properly, so next up we need to get a little shading on those metallics. The Scale 75 Metallics range is another example of good, foolproof paints that do what you expect. A little Peridot alchemy here and there, and we are well on our way to a better looking gold. Third and final highlight for the gold goes to Citrine Alchemy. I noticed the heavy metal take on the Black Legion trim was a super cool, almost silvery gold, and I'm in no mood to argue here. On the palette there, it looks fairly warm, but in context, this Citrine keeps things pretty icy. Zip through all the skulls with some Skeleton Horde contrast paint, and this unfortunate guard's helmet with some corrupted stamina from Scale 75's instant colour range, and look at us go. We're well on our way to done. The silvers get a similar treatment to the gold, just going up the scale of value to give them a little more oomph. And speaking of oomph, just a smidge more variation and saturation in the gold will lift it, I reckon, so out comes another favourite of mine, Vallejo's Skin Wash Ink. It's really simple to glaze with inks, since they tend to already be transparent and highly pigmented, so that just gets run into a few metallic nooks and crannies and into the top portion of the tusks to make them a bit more interesting. There are lots of ways to handle red, but we're keeping it simple today. We're relying on the naturally slightly transparent nature of acrylics and layering to build our volumes here with one paint, primary red from Liquitex's acrylic gouache range. Edges now. This would be a good place to add some wear and tear if you were in the mood for that, but as I said I was going for a sort of bargain bin heavy metal aesthetic here, I'm keeping things nice and smooth. Accepted Wisdom would tell us that we want to avoid mixing our own colours when speed and batch painting, but, fool that I am, I've never really been one for accepting Wisdom. A little purple, a little black, and a little white gives us a nice initial edge highlight colour, and adding a little more white allows us to up the contrast in a few key areas. All just picking out twiddly details now, like those pesky little armour teeth, and the wooden stakes on the termy's little trophy fence a skull-studded wooden fence on a power-armoured slave of the Dark Powers. Chaos Space Marines, you really are amongst the most 40k-ish things in 40k. Massive thanks as always to my gorgeous patrons on Patreon, who keep the Maleficent powers flowing through my wand, uh, I mean my brush, and of course to you, wonderful viewer, who has lovingly cast the spell Click on the ancient sigil of Thumbs Up just below this video. If you've been entertained or informed, consider dropping a tip with the super like button and help keep me in stock of paints and other essential liquids. A quick zip around with some black ink to deepen a few recesses here and there, and we are ready to take a look at our big bad buddy here. There you go. It's cleaner than my usual aesthetic, and of course, if you wanted to invest a little more time, there's plenty more you could do to up the ante on him. But clocking in at under one and a half hours for the whole mini? Really, who can complain? What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, so why not tippy-tap some thinkings there? And if you've made it this far, why not have a sneak peek of what we may or may not be looking at next time? Cheers.